So our last little skill here in unit five on gases has to do with gas stoichiometry. Stoichiometry, just remember, is a way to take a balanced chemical equation and ask questions that allow us to relate quantities of different things, right? So we'll have an equation that maybe we need to write ourselves, balance ourselves, maybe it's a chemical name to a formula. All of these embedded skills kind of continue to be in play here. And we're gonna ask information about maybe products or reactants. We're asking questions like, how much product will we make? How much reactant is needed? Do we have a limiting reactant problem? All of this stuff comes together. So the only thing that's really new here is that we have a new way to walk to moles. If we have a gas, and I'm gonna kind of highlight this in multiple places, do not use PV equals NRT if you do not have a gas. But if you do have a gas and you know the pressure, volume, and temperature of that gas, you can figure out the quantity of gas that you have in moles. So remember, how directly um, information is given to you is going to uh, correlate with how easy a problem is to solve. Remember in our unknown variable problems, it's like if we're given pressure in, in atmosphere, temperature in Kelvin, volume in liters, and quantity in moles, everything's given to us exactly how we need it. This could be a way to add a little bit of a twist to a PV equals NRT problem, because maybe we're not given quantity in moles. Maybe we're given just some information that we need to then use PV equals NRT as an unknown variable problem to get to moles. And then we do stoichiometry, okay? So this is just kind of the different ways that we know to walk to moles. It's gonna be part of this um, kind of hot mess that we have here, but that's color coordinated to identify that now we're just adding in a new way to walk to moles. It's shown sort of in orange here. Avogadro's number allows us to walk from number of, of entities to moles. Molecular weight, grams to moles. Molarity, volume to moles. Um, and then again, if you know the pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas, you can use PV equals NRT to get you the quantity of that gas in moles. Um, knowing that we can change who we're uh, talking about using a balanced chemical equation, and then we can have ratios of atoms within a chemical formula to allow us to use things. We don't tend to see this one uh, as much. One thing that's not written on here, but remember there's other walks that we know about. If we know, um, for example, the mass and the density of a gas uh, or, or of, a subs of, a, of a substance, we can get to volume. So density is another one of these pieces. So this really is sort of our game board, if we will, that allows us to get to the number of moles of something that we have. Once we know the number of moles of a substance that we have, we can use stoichiometry to answer a whole bunch of questions. So nothing really new here in terms of you have to have mastered stoichiometry. It's just another way to get that number of moles. The last thing to talk about here is something I'm not gonna really spend much time in class talking about, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I do want you to understand that we call this the ideal gas law because we're making the assumption that a gas is behaving ideally. So the truth really is that when we're at standard temperature and pressure, that is how most gases are behaving. They're behaving ideally in the laws that we have, whether it's Boyle's law, Charles' law, Avogadro's laws, all of those laws tend to be obeyed. We start running into problems when we have gases that either occupy an infinitely small volume, so we squeeze those molecules so close together that they start noticing that they have neighbors. An ideal gas really has no attractions for its neighbors. Um, something else to just kind of think about might be something you see a qualitative question on. When we're talking about the motion of gases, we're making the assumption that they're constantly moving, the motion is random, and it's proportional to molecular weight. So small gases are going to move more quickly than large gases, and that's just intuitive, that makes sense. And here's two ways that we can think about gases moving. If fusion is this escape of a gas through a small hole. So imagine that you've got a helium balloon, right? And after a little while, you'll notice that the balloon really didn't get smaller in size, but it's not really floating anymore. Well, what's happening is the very small helium um, atoms are able to escape through the small holes in the latex balloon. Now, larger gases 
don't escape as, as, as easily. So you lose the helium, and so the balloon is still inflated because there's other gases that are still in there, oxygen, nitrogen, and so forth. But the small helium gas can escape through effusion, and so your balloon is not going to rise anymore. Diffusion is the spreading out of a gas through a container. So think about this if you were to smell something, right? What you're really having is gas molecules that start at some point in a room. Let's say we open up a bottle of perfume. Eventually, you'll smell that in a far corner of the room, and that's because those molecules are diffusing throughout that space. So just a little bit of qualitative stuff. We're not going to have problems that we practice in class on this, but there might be some problems that you'll have to address from a qualitative standpoint on some of your um, quiz questions. Again, we see deviations when we start having high pressure, high temperature, um, small volumes are going to be problematic for kind of deviations. We're not going to get into any of the hows and whys for this, but we have ways of sort of fixing this problem by adding fudge factors, if you will, basically adding additional parts to the PV equals NRT equation that helps to offset things that become non-ideal. So I'm not going to go through any of the details for what those are, so don't worry about that. But I do want you to understand that under normal conditions, gases behave ideally and PV equals NRT will hold up. When we start having high pressure, high temperature, uh, then we're going to start having those deviations. And understanding these concepts of effusion and diffusion um, are important.